What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of a really realistic foam flinging sniper rifle I found on Amazon. They call it the M40A6. This blaster's spring powered, magazine fed, bolt action, and uses shells and features shell ejection, which is pretty rad. This is by far the most realistic sniper rifle foam flinger I've ever seen to like a dangerous degree. Let's get into the review, bros. Included is the blaster, magazine, scope, shells, darts, and unjamming rod. External overview of the blaster starting up front. There's no in-strike barrel lug, but it does have a very intimidating looking muzzle brake. Moving back, it has a Picatinny style rail running along the whole top of the blaster right here, and a little Picatinny segment under here, and it has some quasi M-lock style rails up here. This has an alarmingly realistic front end. I do want to remind you, this is just a foam flinger. This does not have the legally required orange tip. I did buy this on Amazon. I don't think it would be legal to buy something like this off the shelf in the US. For good reason. Don't walk outside with anything that looks like this, or you're going to get dropped. In Florida, man. <laughs> on top of the rail, I have installed the included scope. Compared to the realism of the rest of the blaster, the realism of the scope really falls short. It doesn't look realistic at all. Up close, it looks kind of cheap and plasticky. When you look through, there's no crosshair, but they do have a distortion lens in there. So it kind of warps your appearance of it. It doesn't actually magnify what you're looking at. It doesn't help you aim, but it does help you feel more like a sniper if you've never shot a real rifle. But it is a standard Picatinny rail, so if you wanted to put on a different scope that did look cooler, you totally can. Moving down to the magazine, to get the mag out, you hit the mag release, which is right here. You hit that and then pull the mag out. This is a shell ejecting blaster, so you can't shoot this without the included shells. And these are the included shells. So to load this one, you get your dart, you put it into the shell like that, then you get your shell and you put it into the magazine like that. The magazine holds five rounds. This magazine and these shells are not compatible with any other foam flinger I've ever seen. And these darts are much more narrow than standard Nerf Elite darts. They're a different length than Elite darts, but you still can't cut down your Elite darts because they're too thick. These included darts are much more narrow and totally proprietary. The Amazon seller that sells this rifle does doesn't sell extra shells or extra ammo, which is kind of a bummer because you're eventually going to lose your five shells and then you can't really shoot the blaster anymore and these aren't sold separately. More on that in my opinion. But after you have your magazine loaded up, you can put that back in. Then to prime the blaster, it's kind of weird. So this is a bolt action system that feels and looks very real. So you lift up the system and you pull back but that's not the prime. For some reason, this primes when you push it back. So right here, it's easy. And then right here, I'm priming the spring. So the prime stroke is only a couple inches, but it doesn't happen on the prime. You have to push it in and it's very uncomfortable. That led to a number of problems in my testing procedure. This system is just bizarre. Anyways, after you do that, you're prepared to fire once. And then next time you prime back the blaster, the shell ejects in a very dramatic way, which is very cool. The shell ejection system is super cool. It very dramatically flings the shell out of the blaster. And I guess the biggest advantage of the prime not being on the pull is when you want to eject your shell dramatically, there's no prime force. So you can very lightly, dramatically pretend you're in that sniper mode, your Mark Wahlberg and shooter or whatever you're fantasizing about. And you can very gently pull that back and it ejects. And it's worth noting the safety and bolt system is very similar to modern bolt guns. So if you're going after that very accurate two scale system, this is a pretty solid one. I've never seen a foam flinger with such realistic proportions when it comes to the action. But moving on with the overview, right behind the action is the trigger safety. So forward is fire, rear is safe. And then down below is the trigger. The trigger pull is pretty standard. This blaster does not have slam fire, but the trigger break and release is very crisp and it's really quite nice. Now down to the grip. This is unlike most Nerf grips on the market, but if you've ever shot a modern precision long range bolt gun, it's actually very similar. Modern precision long range bolt guns are moving to a more vertical grip because it's a little more comfortable. Usually you're shooting these with your thumb out here rather than behind the grip. And it stays true to that. This is a pretty comfortable grip that feels very similar to a precision long range chassis platform. It's a much lighter version, obviously, but the proportions and scale is like scary accurate. So overall, pretty good grip. That's not something I'd want on like a carbine or a rifle, but on a precision long gun, it actually fits really well. And now back to the stock. This is a pretty cool stock because it's a side folder. So you can push this like that and then your whole stock will collapse. You can no longer activate the action when the stock is folded, but to make it smaller for storage, this is super convenient and super tactical to whip it out like this and then take your shot. And this stock is adjustable. The cheek piece right here goes up and down and the length of pull can be adjusted rear and back. And that's super simple to get to. You can just undo this little lever like that and spin this little wheel, which is the adjustment. And then you can adjust it and then clamp this down and it'll lock in place. It is very quick and easy to adjust to your body type, but then once you clamp it down, it's pretty solid. The length, of course, you're gonna wanna adjust based on the length of your limbs and your body, but the adjustment of this piece is really what scope you have on there to make sure when you're resting your face on there, you can look through your scope comfortably. And this stock has two Picatinny rails, one right here and one underneath here. So if you wanted to put a little monopod back here or something else like a dope chart, <laughs> if you could, I guess. Taking this way too seriously, I keep forgetting this is a Nerf gun. <laughs> It doesn't feel like a Nerf gun. It doesn't look like one. This is 
scary, man. But that is an external overview of this blaster. Now I'll show you it firing. Shooting the included regular tip darts. Operating this blaster was not like any other Nerf blaster I've shot. It is very obviously a prop style blaster. It's not meant to be a competitive blaster or even an effective plinker. While the velocity was pretty decent, the accuracy was just not there. And these darts are proprietary, so you can't just switch out to waffle head darts or some other dart that you have that will shoot more accurately than the included ammo. Because again, these darts are too skinny. It's not compatible with Nerf darts or half length darts or any other darts that I have. These are proprietary, which is annoying. A firing note on these shells. These shells fly all over. The ejection flings them pretty far. And being black, if they fly into an unlit corner, into a shadow, which is looking black, they disappear and they're very hard to find. But I didn't have any jams or actual malfunctions, but I did have a bunch of issues because of human error. And like I said, it's push to prime, not pull to prime. And I kept messing this up and bumping the priming handle into the trigger safety. Now it's not technically mechanical failure. It is human error, but it's really susceptible to human error. I kept having issues because of how it's designed. You prime the action from here forward. And it's really weird. It doesn't catch when you push it in. It doesn't stop. You actually have to push it in and shove it down. And now it's primed and ready to fire, but if I flick this up, it'll eject back. Flick this up. And that just unprimed itself. So it doesn't catch itself in the forward position. You actually have to catch and capture the spring yourself. It's more work than it needs to be. It's not realistic to how a real bolt gun works. So I got very frustrated with that element. And I kept accidentally bumping into my safety, turning it safe on accident. You can get used to it with some muscle memory, but I'm really shocked that they designed it this way. It really wasn't super fun to shoot. That might be because I'm a nerfer and I'm used to nerf blasters and foam flingers working a certain way. So if you're a dedicated prop person and you have no muscle memory from other foam flingers, this might be fine for you and I might be overstating this problem. But I'm still going to complain because it was really annoying. But other than that, no jams or malfunctions. It actually shot pretty okay. And they included this unjamming rod, but I didn't have any squibs or darts trapped in the barrel at all. I didn't need to use this. So that's the firing experience. To compare this blaster to others, I put it up on my chronograph. And with the included ammo, I got an average muzzle velocity of 93 feet per second, which is a lot harder than the Nerf Elite Par of 70 feet per second. But keep in mind, the included ammo are much lighter than Nerf Elite darts, so that velocity might be a little deceiving. It shoots really fast, but they lose a lot of their oomph after 30 or 40 feet. It doesn't really shoot far, it just shoots really fast at a closer range. So that's the objective information I can provide on this blaster, now to my personal opinion. My opinion split from cosmetics and actual operation. First with the operation, I'm not really stoked with how this blaster fires. The action is not super fun to use. It's really satisfying to pull back on this priming handle and eject the shell, but then it's a really big hassle to have to prime it back. Like that, gosh. I don't like how this is designed. And a blaster like this is all about the emotional experience. You want to enjoy using the action. You don't want to feel frustrated and annoyed by it. So no kudos for the mechanics of this one. Furthermore, using shells can be really fun for a short period of time. But this blaster only comes with five shells and it has a five shot capacity. And you will lose these shells eventually. I don't know why they're black. I really think they should have been a brass or a higher visibility color or even orange. They eject all over, they hide under my couches and then I kept losing them. And once you lose the shells, you can no longer shoot the blaster. You cannot load darts right into the magazine. You need the shells for it to work. So it's kind of a bummer that it's so essential. They fly out of the blaster and they only included five of them. Next for performance, using proprietary ammo is so 90s. That's just dumb. All the foam flinging brands need to be using half length or full length darts or rival or mega or some other standardized ammo. But these skinny darts don't make any sense to me. The performance of these is not better than a dart zone half length dart or even a nerf elite dart. And ammo is a wearable component. After a few hundred rounds, they wear out and you need to replace them. And this Amazon seller doesn't have this ammo type sold separately. So that's a huge con and a very big annoyance. So my opinion on the mechanics of how this one actually operates and shoots is very bad. But my opinion on this one as a prop, as a cosmetic toy, oh my gosh, this is the most realistic foam flinging blaster I've ever seen. It is scary accurate how realistic this blaster looks. Now this is kind of minus the scope. The scope really doesn't look very realistic and it looks really cheap up close. But the rest of this blaster, this tan paint they used is like matte and very tactical looking. It's extremely realistic, which is very cool if you're into 
cosmetics, but please don't ever walk outside with something like this. This looks like an actual gun. It does not have the legally required orange tip to be sold in the US, which is super dangerous and really just not smart. So if you're a prop person and you just want it to look cool and you don't actually want to shoot it, okay, my opinion on this one's pretty high. But that gets me to the question to buy or not to buy. If you enjoy actually flinging foam, don't buy this one at all. It's really not that fun to shoot. The shells are fun for like 10 minutes and then they get old really fast. And this action is not smooth enough to make it feel cool to shoot. So if you're a target shooter or a plinker or you want to enjoy the action of actually shooting and handling the blaster, no, don't buy this one. I think this one is really only suited to cosmetic people who want it to look realistic. However, I spent about $150 on this blaster. At that price, you can go buy an airsoft gun. Airsoft guns are no fun indoors because you can't shoot them without hurting people or damaging your drywall and like breaking stuff in your house. So to buy or not to buy, I really don't recommend this one to anyone. If this blaster was sold at like $50 or $60, I could see some prop people really enjoying it. But it is wildly overpriced. I bought this one so you don't have to. The original product page that I bought this one from was deleted, but I'll put a purchase link down there so if you want to buy it for some reason, you can. If you are actually going to buy one of these, would you mind leaving me a comment and telling me what you're going to use it for? And then after you get it, if you edit your comment and tell me, are you satisfied with that purchase for 150 bucks? I think the only customers who are satisfied with this product don't know what their money is worth and what else is out on the market. But hey, this was a fun outside the box review for this channel. So that's it for this video review. Thanks for sticking around this long. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical.